uh, Facebook Live God's Love Bank program. And I am speaking in the city of Abilene, Texas today. We want to welcome everybody. We want you to know we appreciate your support. We appreciate your uh, desire to grow and to develop uh, in your new self. And so uh, we're just glad to have you with us today. So let me begin by just rehearsing some basic principles about the God's Love Bank program that I think is very important uh, and it can serve as a foundation for your growth and your development. So God's Love Bank really is your spirit, soul, and body functioning and operating as God's Love Bank. And when you understand that your spirit, your spirit, your soul, and your body is really how God created you in the beginning. The Bible says in Genesis chapter two, verse number seven, God formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. And so what we find then in 1 Thessalonians chapter five, verse number 23, the Bible says uh, that I would that your whole spirit and body and so be preserved blamelessly until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so what we are really doing is really focusing in on true spiritual growth. And of course, it's important to understand that spiritual growth is growing out of the old self into the new self. And that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on how do you grow out of the old self into the new self. And we have been talking about uh, the whole notion of what our new self really is. And I trust and pray that you have been growing, that you know what your new self is, and you know what your old self is. If in fact you don't know what your old self is yet, I recommend that you go to my website, oldselfnewself.com. And you can learn what your old self is in approximately three minutes and your new self as well. Uh, that gives you the basic understanding of your old self and your new self. And so what we want to do today is we want to start at your baseline, which is your old self, and then show you how to grow out of the baseline of your old self into your new self which is very important. Paul says, says it like this, you were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self and its deceitful lust and to be made new in the spirit of your mind and to put on your new self, which is created in true righteousness and holiness. So we appreciate you already. We see you, Kevin, good to have you with us today. We see you, uh, uh, Tammy, we see you, uh, uh, Sonia, we see you, Crystal, we see you, Ken, we see you, Janice, we see you, Carolyn. So let me rehearse again what we're going to do today. Okay, now we've been learning that we have an old self and, we knew, and a new self. Every human being on the face of the earth, whether they realize it or not, have an old self. And the old self is the bank robber of their soul. And whatever the soul consists of, it affects your daily life in your health, your wealth, your relationships, your career, and your salvation. So what we have to understand then is that we all have old self. And because we've been living with it so long, we have learned to love it. And because we've learned to love it, our old self love home base drives us and controls us. And so what we want to do is learn how to live in our new self love home base. Now, let me give you the four home bases in the old self and the new self as we begin to go further in our study. If you got an old self love home base of worthlessness, your new self love home base is greatness. If you got an old self love home base of rejection, your new self love home base is chosenness. If you have an old self love home base of atonement or rather, Abandonment, your new self-love home base is atonement. And then if you have an old self-love home base of abuse, your new self-love home base is purpose. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress to you how important this information is to you, your life and your happiness. There are literally millions of people being driven by their old self and is wrecking, ruling and ruining their lives. I think it's responsible for the large number of people who experience divorce. I think it's responsible for the epidemic that we have when it comes to singles. You see, when I'm single and I meet another person, if I don't know that my old self is driving me and controlling me and motivating me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to date in my old self. Now, what happens is a lot of single people date in the old self and get down the road and they find out that they are involved with a Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hyde. They find out that they are involved with a person that didn't even know themselves. So they've spent all this time in this relationship and then they end up in a relationship with a person whose old self then causes them to do negative, defeating, sabotaging, destructive things to them. And then they waste a lot of time. So I cannot stress how important it is for you and other people to learn <clears throat> the importance of learning your old self so you can put it off and put on your new self. Now, I'm going to speak one day on what I call the great cover up. There are Christians who are living in their old self and they believe in Jesus. They believe in God. They believe in going to church. In many cases, many of them are faithful church goers. But the real problem is you can have old self love and be a Christian. How do you know, Roach? Well, the church at Colossae was a full grown church. The church at Ephesus had elders and deacons and, and it was a full grown church. That church has died out since then. I'm talking about that particular congregation don't even exist in Ephesus today. Well, what happened? Paul said over there in Ephesians chapter four, around about verse 18 through 24, he said, you've gotten caught up <clears throat> with the darkness of your own understanding, with the futility of your own mind and your hearts have become corrupt. And then he said, but you didn't learn about Jesus like that. When you learned about Jesus talking to that church at Ephesus, I'm over there in Ephesians chapter four, right about verse number uh, 20 right now. He said, when you learned about Jesus, when you heard the truth about Jesus, you were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self and its deceitful lust and to be made new in the spirit of your mind and put on your new self, which is created in true righteousness and holiness. Well, let me back up and say, what is Paul doing? Paul is really remand, uh, remand, uh, um, not to, uh, reprimanding them. He's really reprimanding them because they uh, have allowed their old self to cause them to have futility in their minds and darkness in their understanding. And yet they were Christian. And that's why I believe there's a great cover up that's going on. And if in fact leaders and preachers are not aware of it, you can't teach what you don't know no more than you can leave where you don't go. So consequently, as go to priests, so go to people. That's why I encourage uh, preachers who I love with all of my heart. I've been preaching for 47 years. There are several preachers, many of them throughout our brotherhood who's using the God's Love Bank program. But when you understand that, then you can speak to the needs of people who are struggling with their old self and want to know how to put on their new self. Good to see you, D. Bland one of our faithful sisters who learned about God's love bank some years ago. We are so thankful for the people who are growing, Cherie and, and, and uh, Jerry and, and, and others. So today for the subject, how do you grow out of the old self into the new self? Now, last Friday, we were talking about the home basis, the new self-love home basis. And remember, I told you, this is how God sees us. And this is how we should see ourselves. But you don't just automatically jump into the new self once you learn the old self. You have to grow out of the old self into the new self. That's why Paul said you got to put off this old self and put on your new self. But the big question is, how do you do that? Okay, so in Proverbs chapter four and verse number seven, the Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. 
Therefore, get wisdom. But with all of your getting, get an understanding. Today, I want to help us to understand some of the things that motivates the old self and affects the new self. What I want you to see today is some of the weaknesses of the old self love that has an unusual impact on the new self. Now, when I am aware of those things, then it helps me to be more prepared to put off the old self and put on the new. An interesting passage, I, I believe is really profound, is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number five. It says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove yourself, know yourself, how that Jesus Christ is in you. What that text is teaching us is that we got to take the time to examine ourselves. This is not a test. That's why I tell people when you do the old self, new self .com, uh, profile, it's not a test. It's really a profile and an assessment to help you to examine yourself, to know yourself, to prove yourself, the Bible says. If you, if you don't do this, he says, you will end up being a reprobate because you have Christ in you, but you didn't get to know who you really were. So let's talk about some of the old self-love weaknesses when it comes to these various home bases. Now, y'all remember, we learned that uh, once you learn your old self, you focus on your new self. And see, here's something that I learned from experience. Now, I've been teaching this information for over 35 years. Uh, I've been teaching it in ministry for over 35 years. I've been studying this and working with it over 38 years. I've been in churches all over the country, all overseas. So I've gained experience. And here's what I found. A lot of times when a person learns what their old self is, they celebrate. Hercules, Hercules, they know what their old self is because it's very enlightening and it's very insightful. But then they tend to stop there. They acknowledge the old self, but they don't own it. You have to own the old self. And remember, we learned owning it is really taking 100% accountability and responsibility for everything that has happened to you in your life up until this moment. In other words, you got to be 100% accountable for everything or rather responsible for everything that has happened to you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Then once you become 100% responsible to that, then you got to be 100% accountable to God for how you respond to what happens to you. That's why New Self Power says the power to choose my own response to what happens to me in life and to be proactive rather than reactive. So what we've got to begin to understand then is uh, you have to own it. Acknowledging it is like the one talent man. He acknowledged that he had one talent, but he really, he really never dealt with it. He blamed God, called him unfair and called him unjust and then had the audacity to come to him and say, here, See, you can have what is yours. He never owned it. So I want to encourage you to own your old self-love home base, your good, your bad, and the ugly aspects of your old self. And remember, when you do so, what you're really doing is what Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10 says. It says, stop lying to yourself and to other people about your old self which is being renewed. Oh, let me back up. It says, stop lying to yourself and to one another uh, about your old self and its practices. Now we learn that your old self got practices. And those of you who have been following your old self long enough, you pretty much know you do have practices and it's unique to you. But then it says, which is being renewed in knowledge. So knowledge about the old self gives birth to the new self. So don't run from it. Learn as much as you possibly can about your old self and own it. And when you do, you jumpstart yourself into the new self. And that's who you really are. Because your old self is your false self, but your new self is your true self. That's your higher self. That's your best self. That's your supreme self. That's your old self resurrected and made new by the Holy Spirit. And that's who you really want to be. And that's what spiritual growth is all about. Now, if the church at Ephesus and the church at Colossae had people in there 
and it's a full grown church with elders and deacons and, and, and teachers and things like that, and they still was caught up in the old self, that means that they weren't growing out of the old self. So what we wanna do is make sure that we learn how to grow out of the old self into the new self. And so I want us to focus on getting the understanding. Now y'all remember uh, on last week, I said that one of my spiritual sons uh, brought a thought to my mind uh, about how God sees us. See, God doesn't look at us in our old self. He looks at us in our new self, you see. And so what we, we focused on last week was showing you the epitome of who you're supposed to be. Now, let's be clear. The devil don't just roll over and play dead, nor does the old self. The old self is like Jason on Friday the 13th. It don't stop coming. It don't run. It takes its time. You know, Jason on Friday the 13th, some of you who know what I'm talking about, Jason, he don't stop. He, he don't run. He don't chase you. He just keep walking, keep coming. And eventually he gets you. If you know anything about this, this, this movie called Friday the 13th, the old self is the same way. It's like Jason. It keeps coming. It'll stay there until you put it off. And if you don't put it off, it will wreck, ruin, and drive your entire life. And ladies and gentlemen, the sad thing is when you see it happening and you are aware, when you see it happening to your children, when you see it happening to your wife or your husband or your teenager, or when you see it happening to the members of the church, you feel like you want to do something to help them. Well, the best way to do that is get an understanding of how to put your old self off and put on your new self. Okay, so there are four types of new self-love home bases and four types of old self-love home bases. I already covered that. So let's start with this home base of greatness. You remember on uh, uh, last week, we talked about the people with the home base of greatness. I'm just gonna highlight a few things. They just do everything they believe in greatness. They focus on greatness. They want everybody to be great. They have a passionate about everything in life. They strongly desire intimacy. They uh, care deeply about others and they care deeply about relationships with others. Uh, they can spot phoniness in people whenever the person comes phony because they believe in being sincere and they believe in being loyal. They uh, uh, have a tendency to overcompensate and control to make sure that they can have greatness happening in their life. So they create a culture for greatness with everybody they come in contact with, churches, family, children. Now, very often they can be misunderstood because sometimes the weaknesses of their old self-love causes them to overcompensate and control and they get frustrated because they're trying to make sure that they are great and everybody around them are great. And so consequently, when that don't happen, one of the weaknesses, they can get frustrated. So let me mention a few other weaknesses about this home base of greatness in the old self, which is worthlessness. They tend to judge people when they don't meet their high expectations. Now, now, now remember, we wanna get an understanding. Why is that so with people with the home base of, of greatness with the old self of worthlessness? Because they expect everybody to be great. They expect, expect everybody to go for what's great. And when they don't, they have a tendency to judge. They can also be self-righteous. Well, how does, why? What's the understanding behind that? Because of this strong, a desire to overcompensate and control so that you can be great, they tend to live by shoulds and oughts. And when a person don't do what they ought to do, they tell them what they should do, and consequently, they come across the wrong way. Now, keep in mind, we're understanding what's motivating this, this home base of greatness in the new self, but our old self-love weakness uh, if you will, of worthlessness. They tend to personalize things and they are disappointed and hurt and they begin to fret sometimes when things don't work out. In other words, they take things personal. So if I'm trying to help somebody to do something, I'm trying to encourage them to be great, I'm trying to help them, and when they don't, 
our old self-love weaknesses, I, then, I tend to take it personal and begin to fret. Another characteristic about people's weaknesses in the old self who want to be great is they tend to worry a lot. And sometimes, uh, even though they prepare and are ready to do something, they can have a tendency to worry. As a matter of fact, I remember I was doing a, a, this last year, we had the God's Love Bank Institute. So we broke into groups based on the old self love home basis. And do you know the group of people with the old self love home base of, of uh, worthlessness? Every one of them stopped and said they have a difficult time relaxing. And you know why? Because in the old self, you're overcompensating and controlling. Why? Because you really are motivated to live great. Even when you don't know that your new self-love home base is greatness, you will have a tendency to want to live into that greatness. And so you're constantly thinking and constantly working. Even when you're sleeping, you got to watch yourself because you'll go to sleep in, at night thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow. You wake up in the morning and the first business order of the old self is to get you to be preoccupied with the pain of the problems of the past so to rob you of the power of the moment. So what people whose home base is greatness have to learn is how do I live in my greatness without worrying, without overcompensating? And so here's what I want to suggest to uh, a people with the home base of, of worthlessness striving to be great. That's where the 15 core values of Jesus, called new self-love core values, and the 15 twos of thinking. So I'm going to give some core values to people with the home base of greatness so that you can invest in that particular core value with, with the twos of thinking so that it can help you to cope with this tendency to uh, 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 create this, this, this stress as a result of worrying, as a result of not relaxing in the spirit, as a result of wanting everything to be great and wanting everybody to be great, as a result of that focusing on the pain of the problems of the past, which robs you of the power of the moment. So let me make a couple of suggestions. Number one, look at the core value, the new self-love core value of new self-worth. Listen to it. It says the worth that I re the worth that I place on my mental and physical well-being as a result of realizing that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which uh, allows me to avoid other worth and thing worth, and I take care of my mind and body every day. See, those core values, even though I have memorized them, what you want to do is get those core values so you can articulate and invest in them on a day-to-day -day basis when you're dealing with your old self. So now, what we got to understand then is, okay, new self-worth helps you to take care of your mind and body every day, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit works with you. So let me give you uh, a tool of thinking to work with that. I recommend that you use the tool of thinking called love deposits and withdrawals. Why? Because you can turn every love withdrawal into a love deposit. Because a love deposit is based on faith, hope, love, purpose, and good news. A love withdrawal is based on fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news. So when I began to uh, experience pain, it creates fear, and fear creates worry, and worry creates doubt. Then I began to overcompensate, so use the tool of love deposits and withdrawals. Now, another tool of thinking for people with this home base of worthlessness, getting an understanding of how it has certain weaknesses that affect your new self of greatness is the tool of thinking called the prayer macro strategy. Why the prayer macro strategy? Because the prayer macro strategy helps you to stay in a state of prayer 24 seven. So when you wake up in the morning, you wake up in your prayer macro strategy. You wake up coming up with at least seven things that you're thankful for. Lord, I'm thankful for the day. I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my strength. I'm thank thankful for my spouse. I'm thankful for my children. And while you are doing that, you are literally creating a preponderance of love deposits in the bank of your soul, which minimize the tendency of love withdrawals, which is causing you to have fear, worry, doubt, pain, and bad news. You see that? Now, those of you 
who haven't learned about the prayer macro strategy or you need more information, go back to some of my Facebook live uh, shows we've done. And I talked in detail about the prayer macro strategy. I also talked in detail about love deposit and withdrawals. But now let me give you another uh, 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 core value called new self-love accounts that you should invest in. Many times people don't focus here, but new self-happiness. Listen to what it says. The happiness I receive from life itself, from relaxing in the spirit and living every moment of life to the fullest, knowing that, that joy is eternal, but happiness is temporary. Therefore, I will pursue joy so I can live in my happiness. Happiness, new self-happiness is the ability to relax in the spirit and live in the moment. Now, what's the last tool of thinking I'd recommend for people with this home base of uh, worthlessness wanting to live in their greatness? The Holy Spirit's triple A card. One of the most powerful tools of thinking that can help you grow spiritually. The first thing you do is you, the first A, you acknowledge the Holy Spirit as Lord. You acknowledge him as a person. He's not an it, he's not a thing, he's not an exertion, he is a person. He is not limited to the word, although he never contradicts the word. He is the one who created the word. All scriptures was given by the Holy Spirit. So you got to relax in the spirit and the first thing you do when you're dealing with your old self and you wanna put it off, acknowledge the Holy Spirit as Lord. Then number two, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you as you put off your old self. Jesus taught that when he said over there in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, he will give the Holy Spirit to everyone who ask him. And then third, this is very important, you got to abide with the Holy Spirit while you are growing out of your old self into your new self, ladies and gentlemen, and you will be growing spiritually. Amen. All right, so let me, let me move on now here. Uh, we look at my time here. Let me move on now to the home base of uh, uh, rejection with the intention of growing into the new self of chosenness. So what are we doing? We're getting the understanding of the weaknesses of the old self and how they can impact how I grow in my new self. Now, remember, your old self is the baseline of your spiritual growth. Your new self is the target that you're growing toward. Spiritual growth is growing out of the old self into the new self. But what's the secret? Use the new self-love core values of Jesus and the new self-love spiritual tools of thinking to help you to do business in the bank of your soul. And as you do so, you grow spiritually out of the old self into the new self. So let me talk a few minutes about some of the old self-love weaknesses that tend to have a, a, a ten tendency to try to rob you of your new self. Well, first of all, people with this old self-love home base of, I'm talking about purpose here now. I, 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 let me back up. I, I, I started with, uh, well, let me move there. I can go there. Let me go back to this home base of respect or rather, the home base of rejection and chosenness. Okay, so what are some of the tendencies of people with the home base of rejection that tries to rob them of their chosenness? Well, first of all, they can be very stubborn. I know it seems like that's not true when you're dealing with that home base of chosenness because they are peaceful and, and, and they are peacemakers, but they can also be very stubborn. And they, when they don't want to do something, you can do what you want to do. They are not going to budge. That's why they got the home base of rejection. Another ten tendency about the uh, a home base of rejection that sneaks up and tries to rob them of their chosenness is they are very difficult to motivate and to inspire because they have a tendency to sell them. See, in the old self, these characteristics of the old self, when you understand what motivates them, it helps you to understand how to put off the old self and live in the new self. Because of this tendency to settle, do just enough to get accepted, only enough not to get rejected, to play things down and to play things less, what happens is they can tend to settle 
for less than God's best. And that's a weakness in the home base of chosenness. They can also be very passive, even to the point of their own detriment. People with that home base of rejection who are striving to live in their chosenness, when you live in your chosenness, then you are living in your new self. But on the way to living in your chosenness, you have to grow out of that old self into that new self. So if you're not careful, you have opportunities before you, but because you are so busy making sure you don't get rejected, making sure you don't fail, you will tend to sometimes be passive and don't have the opportunities to live in your chosenness as God has designed you. Another tendency or weakness of, of this home base of, uh, of rejection is that they don't often get their way unless they become stubborn and negative. Now, why? Remember, we're trying to get understanding. Why? Because they are peaceful by nature. They settle, they're kind, they're gentle, they care, they genuinely care. So sometimes they will uh, sabotage. Well, I don't think the word sabotage is appropriate. They will be passive and not go for the chosenness that God has created in them. And as a result of that, a lot of opportunities to live in their chosenness will pass them by. Actually, they're unfair to themselves and they are willing to give opportunities that they should have for themselves to others because of this tendency to make sure they don't get rejected, make sure they don't get hurt. So they'll settle for less than God's best and God's best is chosenness for them. And so when you understand what the weaknesses of the old self, it can help you to understand how to really appreciate living in your chosenness, you see. They have a tendency to reject themselves and don't appreciate themselves or celebrate themselves like they should. Why? Well, uh, people with the home base of rejection with this desire to live in their chosenness, they really are very kind people, they're caring people, uh, uh, but sometimes they're not fair to their own selves. They don't give their own selves enough credit. And remember, we learned that when they go through life, making sure they get it right after right after right, Pretty soon, if they're not careful, the deceitfulness of the old self can deceive them and then make them be cocky rather than confident. And so this, this tendency of, of these weaknesses of the old self can sometimes rob the person who is chosen. And when they live in their chosenness now, they go through life living up to God's best for them rather than being passive and allowing the opportunities that's best for them to pass them back. They also have a tendency to uh, want attention and never take credit for. Why? Because just understand now this old self home base of worthless, I mean, rejection has this tendency to play things down and to play things less. So a lot of times they can deserve credit and they can feel very comfortable not receiving any accolades for it or, or not uh, 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 being uh, in the limelight all the time, unless sometimes they go to the other extreme. And that is when you get cocky because they get it right every time. And as a result of that, they, uh, uh, the arrogance that can come into that can rob them of the confidence of being chosen, you see. They humble, or rather they are humble and they have a lot of humility. Uh, they can be critical of themselves and they have the tendency to uh, let life pass them by sometimes because of this tendency to not get rejected. Well, now what's the tools of thinking and what core value should you use with this home base of rejection? New self courage, the courage to stand for what I believe is right and not follow the crowd based on what's written in the word of God, even when it's unpopular or, or inconvenient, uh, even if I have to stand alone with the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is essential and important for people uh, uh, with this uh, old self-love home base of rejection with a new self-love home base of chosenness. Another tool of thinking, or rather another core value 
that they can invest in is new self-purpose. The purpose that God had in mind when he created me for his good, which gives me a unique and special gift so that I can discover my purpose and find good in everything in life, even my problems. See, people who are chosen, you were chosen for a purpose. So the more you go after your purpose and find out what your purpose is, the better you can live in your chosenness. Well, what tools of thinking, what new self-love tools of thinking that can help people of chosenness? Well, here's another one. The Holy Spirit's triple A card. You know why? Because people with the home base of rejection, the secret is you got to trust and obey the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when you trust and obey the Holy Spirit, he will help you live up to what you were chosen to live up to and what you were chosen by God to fulfill. Another tool of thinking for this home base of chosenness would be love deposits and withdrawals. Why? So you have to make sure you turn every withdrawal into a deposit. And of course, we've discussed that in more detail. Another tool of thinking I would recommend to people who want to live in their new self uh, 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 home base of chosenness is to pray a macro strategy. Why? Because when you stay in a state of prayer, the Bible says that those whose mind stays on the Lord will live in perfect peace. And remember, peace is one of the major uh, characteristics of people with the home base of chosenness. So when you allow yourself to live with uh, uh, the Holy Spirit and, and communicate with the Holy Spirit and you stay in your prayer macro strategy, it gives you a certain peace. And the Bible says, uh, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. And the peace of God, which passive all understanding will rule and arbitrate in your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You see, so, 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 so peace is important for that home base of chosenness. And one of the ways to do that is to stay in your prayer macro strategy. Well, I'm beginning to look at my time here. And so I am getting ready to wrap this up. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk about uh, atonement and we'll talk about uh, purpose for atonement. We'll talk about how the home base of abandonment has certain weaknesses that try to rob you as you grow out of your home base of abandonment into your home base of atonement. And we'll do the same thing when it comes to the, the home base of, of, of purpose and you're going out of abuse. Now, let me rehearse a few things that I think is important here. First of all, what you got to understand is your old self love is your baseline. It's where you start growing spiritually. And that's why churches can have members of the church who believe in Christ, believe in, in church and all of that, but can be old self-love Christians. So we got to get an understanding of how to grow out of the old self into the new self. And that is spiritual growth. For years, I thought spiritual growth was numerical growth. Numerical growth, baptizing numbers, that's fine. But you can baptize people all day long. But if they don't learn that they got an old self and that their old self is robbing them, you baptizing them and then they become more frustrated than they are uh, uh, it being lost in many cases. Somebody says, well, what about Jesus? Yes, Jesus is important. But you remember the church at Ephesus, they were operating as Christians but they did not focus on how they were taught about Jesus. And that's why the Bible said you will, didn't learn about your old, I mean, you didn't learn about Jesus like this. You learned about Jesus based on your old self and your new self. And, and why? Because Jesus started not robbery to be equal with God. He humbled himself and came down and took on obedience even unto death. In other words, he emptied out his humanity his divinity, rather, to live in our humanity. He was tempted in every way. Jesus came down here to show us that the old self came into existence to rob us of our purpose, to rob us of God's image, to rob us of God's love. And that's what's been happening ever since the fall. So you can have Jesus, but you got to understand that Jesus taught us about old self and new self. 
In fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter six and verse number five, that, cre that Jesus crucified the old self so that we don't have to live under the bondage of the old self anymore. In other words, you are free. You have been delivered, but you gotta live in your new self. And what we've been talking about today, we've covered two home bases, rejection, chosenness, and worthlessness, greatness. And we've tried to give you the tools of thinking and the core values that work with it. So now, uh, let me close by saying, we are focusing now uh, on the new self-love core value called new self-purpose. Listen to it. The purpose God had in mind when he created me for his good, which gives me the capacity to have purpose and good in everything in life. And he gives me a, a special and unique gift to help me to discover what my purpose is and find purpose in everything in life including my problems, live with power and purpose and the God of heaven and his Holy Spirit will, will be with you. Amen? Let it be so.